Oh, hey everyone. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Another video where we are building this guy right here. Yep, him, right there. Um, the F-18E 148 scale by Meng. And while the plane's taking off right now in the background, let's get into it. So, what are we doing today? Well, as you can tell, I've got my cup of coffee here. And we're going to continue building this thing. Last time, we kind of finished up working on the tail fins. That's these guys right here. There's one and two. And working on the engines. These little, these little cans right here. And as I've mentioned before, F-18 engines well, they're a little boring, really. To be honest, I do find them just a little bit boring. There's not a lot of detail on them. You don't have a lot of the, the inner mechanism visible on them to, to show that great detail on how these things, you know, they expand and they retract and whatever. But they're just kind of there. So that's what we've got so far. Now, you might be able to see there's a little bit of a white inside there. I'm not quite happy with it. It could be a little bit whiter. Um, we'll see how it goes. So the next step, they want you, this page is now done. The next step is to actually put this stuff together. Now, I've discovered that this is a very, very tight fit to get that in there. As you can see, it's, it doesn't really want to go. So what I did is I took my sanding stick and just kind of really sand it all the paint off of the edge of this that got on there just so it's going to be a little bit better. I already know that when I put some glue on this, it's going to slide in a lot better. And uh, yeah, it's, it will fit. It's just, it's, it's tight right now. When I put some glue on there, the glue will act like a little bit of a lubricant and will help it to slide in. I'm not going to put them in now though because why put them in now when I just wind up having to mask it all off when I'm painting this thing? So, these are going to just get put aside here for me to maybe forget about. And um, we'll worry about that another time. Meanwhile, we have these guys. And they are a very tight fit to fit in these. So, what I did is I took my knife and just kind of beveled the edge of this right here and here on each side. Just to give it, instead of a harsh edge it's more tapered a little bit just to help guide it into that slot because it is a very very tight fit they don't wobble unlike most kits these tail fins are really tight and it fits in just like that still have the movability of our little fins here on the back which is really cool um, but again I've got other stuff to do on this, so if I put them on now, I wind up having to do this kind of thing, and yeah, they're going to get scuffed up and things like that, so once again, we're just going to leave these off for now. And of course, the instructions want us to put our elevators on, which are these guys, and these just go in here into those little poly caps that we installed on the inside of each side. Okay, and just kind of wiggle it in there, and there we go. And that allows us to pivot them any way we want. We can have them down like this, or we can just leave them straight. Whatever position you want for however you're having it displayed. I might have them tilted up just a little bit like this, and leave them like that in their, you know, parked position is as a you know, a reference to the, the everything being, you know, all the fins and everything all pointing down as in a, a parked position. So, yeah, I probably wind up leaving it like that. But again, we don't need these on here right now. And that's the cool thing about the whole polycap thing. Put them on, take them off, put them on, take them off, put them on, take them off, put them on, take them off. Whatever you want to do. Alright, so... That leaves us to landing gear. And so, 
we've got to put on, we've got to put together some landing gear. So, um, I have already done some preemptive painting. I've already done some preemptive preemptive thing. Just have them on or take off. Yes, exactly like that. So, I have done some preemptive preemptive painting on these, just like that. And um, so, I've even done a little bit of uh, pre uh, panel lining, which my next step is to clean it up a little bit because it just looks a little bit rough right now. So, I have to find a Q-tip or a cotton bud, whatever you wanted to use. That'll work. And I need my white spirit. And um, I might need more um, Q-tips. I think I'll be okay. Uh, hello, Mega Boy. Welcome back. I haven't seen you in a long time. So, again, you guys have seen me do this before. You guys have seen lots of people do it. Dip your Q-tip into the thinner. And then we're going to dry it off. Probably a good 80%. You don't want too much. And then we're going to go in there. I will change my view for you to the overhead so you get a nice better view. Hello. And uh, we're just going to be cleaning up some of our lines on here. There. Just kind of cleaning up this so it doesn't look so raunchy. Now it's always up to you how clean you want it to look. Depends on the aircraft. Um, has this thing seen a lot of a lot of stuff out in the field? Has it been had a lot of maintenance? Has it had a little only a little maintenance? It's all up to you. For the most part, I like to leave the landing gear kind of dirty, um, simply because out in the real world, they don't really care too much about how dirty it gets, as long as everything is functioning and nothing interferes with the functionality of it. It's all they care about. And, uh, it doesn't need to look pretty and that of course is also a bit of the nature of hydraulic systems they tend to weep you guys know what weeping is it's not like it's not leaks but um, it when you're working with a high pressure hydraulic system you just get a tendency to have a little bit of fluid just kind of I, again the only description really is a weep it doesn't it's not an actual leak so it's just like even a, a fairly new hydraulic system if you look at it a lot of the high pressure fittings and stuff they're gonna look like they're wet from a very small amount of hydraulic fluid leaking out on them um, but again it's not really a leak and so they call it weeping As you can see, I've kind of gone in here on these a little bit. Probably a little too much on here, but that's okay. Oh, this little bit of touch up. Is my head in the view? I hope not. these little panels everywhere just where I want to have a little bit of dirt showing let's get back to our main gear here the 
again it's all up to you how dirty or how clean you want it to be but even a brand new even something that's like pretty brand new is still going to have a little bit of grease on it a little bit of hydraulic oil seepage just even just a little bit okay so that's it for this one i've got my other two thank you airplane where it's just the wheels so it's just a matter of getting in there cleaning up my mess a little bit that's all I need really just like that this one has it on this side so I'm just clean these up there we go and then the other one same stuff just clean this up Same on this side. There we go. I missed one little dot on that one to make it kind of funny looking. So I just want to put a tiny, tiny little drop on there. Just for consistency. Okay. Alright. So that's done. That's that. So, with that, with that all cleaned up, we have these. So, I'm going to change my glasses over here. And so, we're going to get C12, which is our main piece here. And we have options. You notice I've got these crossed off because we have two options here that Ming is giving us. We can have it in the parking position or the ready to launch position. And that depends on which one of these two arms you're going to use, either C1 or C2, or if you're going to use C3 or C5. Okay? And that's the big difference there. Because this is Maverick's plane. This, he's not on, and this plane was not on carrier, he was at a base. So we're not going to be having it in the ready to launch position, we're going to be having it in the parking position. But we got to get C12, that's this one right here, this big guy. Ding! Let's get this one taken off of there. Okay, C12. We need C52 and 49. Let's turn this around so I can read the numbers. There's 49. I'm going to need 52, this little guy here. Okay. And then we're going to need C50, if I remember correctly. There's a little block looking guy. That's this guy here. Okay. There's 50. Now we need C1 and C3. C1 is this arm here. Okay. And then C3 is this little arm here. Okay. Now I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to guess I need a, the other side, the other arm that matches this one. I don't know. It's not C5. Okay, C3 and we need C4. There we go, C4. 4 is the opposite. You have to be careful with these tiny little arms that you don't accidentally cut the actual part when you're taking these off. So there's C4, okay. All right, we're gonna need H5, that's a clear part. We'll deal with that in a minute or two, okay? Let's just make sure these are all clean and uh, I'll change the camera again while I have another coffee. Change the camera for you guys again, you get to watch this um, cleanup job. 
Well, there's not much of a cleanup required. It's just a matter of making sure it's all going to fit together. That's the important part. Landing gear parts are always just a little bit delicate, so you want to be careful with them, especially when you're taking off little parts like little bits like this. You don't want to try and bite too hard with your knife. You really just want to shave it. make sure we're all clean on these bits. There's this piece, that's a... That's gotta go. <laughs> that's just gotta go. into the garbage. All right, so if we're looking at it this way, this guy looks like the light is going to go in that little hole, but then where does this guy go? Maybe he goes in the hole, and the light goes in the middle? Yes, I think so. Let's take a look at the light, H5. There's H5. Okay, so H5 has a hole in it for that little peg to go in. All right. Let's continue with our cleanup, shall we? A lot of times I don't bother with these super tiny little cleanup parts. Like cleaning up that tiny, tiny little nub on there is kind of inconsequential. You're never going to tell unless you're looking at this thing with a magnifying glass and you really want to have it perfect, it's really not necessary to clean them up that well. But then again, it depends on what your end usage is going to be like, right? Is this, are you making this for some kind of a, a modeling show or something like that where you're going to get judged on the cleanliness of how you clean everything up, then that diff that changes things, right? My whole channel, the whole thing I'm doing here is just to show you guys that you can have pretty decent looking models without being a professional. You don't need to be a professional. And obviously, you guys have noticed, if you guys, you guys have been following me for a while, you know that my skills have improved over the last year or so. Now you see what I've done? There's two holes that this has to go into. I'm trying to get that lined up for you. Two holes, and that's what these guys. So I want to make sure that that's going to line up. Because currently, it does not. my shit. Pardon my French. Okay. So with that on there, I'm going to put my light. The light goes right there.
be my tweezers. I need to be able to see it too. There we go. Got that on there. Okay. So, let's pull that out. Now we have our little block. It's this guy. He's got to go on that little peg there. like that. Okay. And then, if we put this in the same direction that they kind of have this going, we have our arm, and it's got to go goes inside here like this and this sandwiches it together and go like that that's going to fit into so that it only fit goes in one particular direction so when you get it together it fits all nicely just like that okay and then we have our little arms Okay, now our little arms don't go like this, so it means it's this side. And really all we got to do is line it up on these two little things here. That's going to be this little spot, this little spot, but then it's got this little arm that also connects right in there. Kinda just like that. Let's double check my fitment. Do I have it lined up? Not quite. Now it is. Still not quite right.
here we go. So in this instance, I see I've accidentally hit move that. I am going to use this, my thin, to get it to go where it's supposed to. supposed to go in the hole. There we go. Perfect. There's one. Now we gotta do the other side. And basically does the same thing, just opposite side. alignment is not perfect, it's close, but it doesn't really want to stay for me. It doesn't, all three points aren't literally lining up that great for me, which is why I'm kind of fiddling with it so much. But I think I got it. Just need to make sure it's all going to stay. And I need to double check this inside the fuselage. See, that's all my pieces, that's it. It's not lined up. Alright. She's going to be fine. She'll be just fine. Okay, so that's it for this. Now we've got some decals. They want us to put some decals on these. Okay. So, let's close up my glue. I'm going to go get some water and I will be right back. Be right back. Okay, so, let's change my scene here. So we gotta add a few decals, okay? Um, so we want decal number, let me change my glasses back here. Decals number 206, seven, eight, and nine. Four decals on the main gear. So let me find, that's not the decal sheet I'm looking for. guys. 
So, it's not this sheet. These are all for the missiles. And these are masks for the windows. <laughs> and the wheels, it looks like. Um, so, we need this sheet. Two oh six seven eight nine down here in this corner. So where's my scissors? Two oh six seven eight and nine. Okay. There we go, just these guys. Six, seven, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, so let those sit in the water for a minute. While those are soaking, let's flip the page and have a look. So I want me to put some stuff inside. This is kind of the situation where this all needs to wait, right? This kind of needs to wait a little bit until I start to paint, but not really. This piece here can go on C51. That's got to go on the bottom of the fuselage there. We got a fin that's sticking out, out of there. Another fin and these little guys here that go on the bottom. All these things that you know they they like to break off. <laughs> this piece here is going to be for holding the landing gear bay doors open. Um, that's attaching it with the fuselage. Um, we've got our painting. The inside surface of the nose landing gear bay doors are painted with white. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I already knew that. And then we've got to do the outline in red. F-18 is one of those few planes that actually has a red lining around all their landing gear, gear bay doors. Um, there's not a lot of other aircraft that have that. Let's have a look at our depots here. They are moving already. Good. Perfect. Okay, let's flip back and see where these are supposed to go. 206. 206 goes on our little canister. like to do even on these things I do like to use my mark fit to get them to shrink down on there of course it's not supposed to do that and then of course it replaces it upside down Next, 208, it's this little guy, and he goes about like this, he goes under here. Okay, 207. 207 goes on the back of this cylinder. And then 
209. Goes right here. All right, so just to help these stay in their places. There we go. Deckles are on. We can let those dry. Alrighty. Let's get rid of this. And that's that. So we're going to put this guy over to the side here so he's out of the way and he doesn't get knocked by anything. Because so we've got a couple little pieces to put inside the landing gear bay on this, other than that main piece. Okay. C14, let's see how that's going to fit in here. It's supposed to go right here. So let's take a look at that piece. C14 is going to be 1314. This guy here is kind of a complicated piece. over the black it's going to be easy to figure it out so he needs to go just in this orientation down in here just like that there is a little notch here for this little peg to slide into to clean up this side just a little bit. That's that piece. The other pieces are, let's go A40 and 43. Okay, where's our A tree? A, I think it's here. A. 40 and 43. There's 40. There's 40 and 43 right here. There's 43. And now I need D40 times 2. Back to our D tree, D40. Right here. There's 
one, and we need one off the other tree too. This poor guy didn't quite get the seam. Primer treatment, but that's okay. Okay, so this is 40. And there's a little indent right there for him to go into. And there's one on this side too. So, how well did I clean it up? Well, I didn't clean it up at all. These are the kind of pieces that historically I have, I put them on and then I wind up breaking them off later. And then my models, my airplanes don't have them. <laughs> It's um, just one of those things. You can see a glue on my finger. <laughs> now, let's turn this around, take my glasses off so I can actually see. It does have a little bit of a knob or a peg to help line it up. So that does help. It <laughs> helps a lot. Let's let that sit while I clean this one up. Sometimes these small parts, your fingers are just too big. There we go. So those are two little pointy fin things. Now we have this guy, and he's simple, he goes right in the middle there. So holding on to him with my tweezers, I'm just going to test fit. There's a little notch for him to go into, and he decided that he wants to go on the floor. And I really don't want to spend the next 10 minutes searching for him. So, let's try this guy. Yep, he fits. So, let's put a little bit of glue on him. Okay, now the big, the key to this one is being straight up and down. There's nothing funnier looking than when you got one of these fins and they're not straight up and down. They don't line up. But I seem to have gotten a pretty lucky and that one's looking pretty good. But I'm going to try and find that one that fell down. So, hopefully it landed in a visible spot. I'm going to grab my flashlight on my phone here. No, 
it's not in a highly visible spot. So I will have to look for it another time. That's okay. And it's all right because we have another one. There was actually another D40 right there. And that means I have two more D40s. So let's just borrow one of the other ones for now. Okay, we'll just borrow that one. All right, because this guy, he goes kind of right on the side, somewhere back here. It looks like there's a little notch for him, but I can't see it. Ah, it is, it's right here. So, just looking here, it almost looked like it was down inside of the bay, but it's not, it's this little spot right here. That's just going to go right there. Just like that. And again, I want that straight up and down. Actually, no, I don't. Because of the curvature of that, to make it flush, it's not quite. So that's perfect. So there we go. That's that. The next step is to actually put the landing gear in there, which I don't want to do now. And I'm already, you know, I'm going to switch my camera. I'm already kind of regretting doing these because now I have to mask around these little arms. Okay? And that's dangerous. And I gotta, this is gonna be a little fragile. So get masking in here. When I go to paint this thing, masking in here is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, right? Because now I've got these little arms sticking out, right? These are a little fragile now, so I gotta be careful with these, right? All that stuff. And that's why I don't like to assemble too much um, until everything is kind of painted. I do have another piece that's gotta go right here. C51, so let's find that off of the C tree. Is this the C? That's A. C51, this looks like a little wedge of some sort. Yeah, this is this tiny little guy right here. Let's just drop him on the wing. There we go. Tiny little wedge of a piece. just goes in right there and they show kind of a blown up view of them right there we'll go back to my other camera um, kind of show a blown up view of it how it's supposed to sit um, so because it's so small
Shepherd, where'd you go? There you are. Got a little bit of stuff sticking off the side of him that's not allowing him to go in his home. Try that. That's better. There we go. Okay. Thin set. Back in your hole. There we go. There. That's his new home. Right there. <laughs> okay, so that's that. And the next is all those other pieces. Uh, you know, the airplanes, they get frustrating. Okay, so the next step would be actually installing this thing, but we're not ready to install it yet. Okay, this would be going in here. Okay, and then we'd put our, our bay doors on there. I've got to paint the bay doors. And I've got to put the wheels on. Okay, the wheels are nothing special. I just want to make fully sure that the decals are all seated and dry. In fact, while it's on my mind, let's just make sure that these are going to stay put. That dry. Okay. So, Let's take a look at the next page. This has to go in the garbage. Next page is our other landing gear. It needs to be assembled. Okay? So, let's take a look at these. We want, this is the starboard. We want uh, the main piece is C29, or sorry, C23. I can read, I, I really can. This is 23. And then we want 15 and 16, 1. There's 15. Say 61, yes, 61. There we go. Fifteen sixty one and C nine. All right. Kind of interesting we need C35 okay let's clean these up not much to clean up Decals to put on these also. Which is 
kind of interesting. I haven't seen a lot of a lot of kids that um, have you put so many decals on the landing gear. It's kind of a detail that, well, like I said earlier, you don't really see it. Okay, so we're going to take this, and this is kind of obvious, this goes on here, like so. Now, I do, I do have a criticism, that's not a very good fit at all. It doesn't fit on there very good. I don't know if there's some flashing that I'm missing. It's just not fitting the, on the peg very well. This peg is a little too... it's interfering. So, bye-bye peg. Bye-bye peg. And we can line it up manually. Yep, it's better. It's not perfect. We got a gap. If I was really bothered about it, I'd want to put some putty in there and fill that gap, but I don't have to. Again, it's one of those things, right? How much does all that detail really matter to you? You know? Does it really bother you that you can see that line? Do you want to fill that with putty? Do you want to fill this one with putty and, and eliminate it? Because on this side, yeah, there's a band going around here, but you can't really see it. And same thing here, right? Is that something that really concerns you? Is it something that bothers you? If it really does, then maybe you should fill it in and get rid of that line. Okay, so with this sitting like this, We've got our funky little guy. And it has to go <laughs> somehow. I need to figure this out. How does this piece go? It's going to line up like that. Just like that. Okay, so I'll use the thin set on that one. Since friction is kind of holding it together for me as we speak. Okay. So with that like that, this guy it's lined up like this. here goes in the hole, not this peg, this one does. It's a little bit misleading in the instructions here, but that allows you to line this tip up with where it's supposed to go.
we go. There's that. Now we have this guy. He only goes on one way, but if I put him on now, I'm going to have a pain in the neck of a time trying to paint that. So I will leave that off for now. And we'll leave that like that. That's that side. We've got the other side to do. Now knowing how it's all supposed to go together, this side will be a little bit easier, right? In theory. In theory, that is true. I will give Meng kudos and compliments. They have done a very good job at the level of detail on the landing gear in showing the different pipes and things and having them separate and not one kind of a glob of a mold. Which I've seen quite a few times in other kits that would never have something like this piece as separate, right? It would just be part of it. So let's see how the fitment on this one is. This one fits much nicer. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that piece is in. I've got this guy who has to go in up here. Okay. You got it right, it almost fits just on its own without you having to even put glue on it. Of course, if you don't put glue, you're going to have a bad time <laughs> later on when you got pieces falling apart on you. And there's our port main landing gear. Now the next step is to put this in, actually put them in here, but again, we don't want to do that. We can do our um, arrestor hook. Um, we can put that on, so we need A24 and 25 to go together. We need our A tree. There's 24, and then there's 25.
Okay. So. We have to put this on Ah, oh, there's a little slot. It's a little thin. <laughs> wow. It goes right on that little tip. And then it goes like it's a little wing. Like its own little wing. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's a good thing I mostly got this thing sitting on this side, on its top, because if I had to put it down, well, I'd be busting all these things off of here, including the arrestor hook. Let's move the you guys out of harm's way. on right there. It's a really tight fit for some reason. There is a little peg sticking up. I don't know if that peg, they don't really show the peg there. So I'm going to trim that down. Flush. There we go, there's our arrestor hook installed. Of course everything's black so it's hard to see. I'm really sorry about that guys. But there we go, there's our arrestor hook. And the other part we have is the main landing gear bay doors, which again need to be painted. And then we're going to start moving on to armaments, but we're not really putting any of these armaments on. We're not really doing any of the missiles, are we, right? Because Maverick's plane didn't have any in the movie. The only thing Maverick had was the external fuel tank. And that's all it was. And for the external fuel tank, all we need is A26 and 29. Twenty-six and twenty-nine. Okay. Twenty-six, twenty-nine. These two go together. Okay. We need D fifteen and sixteen. Let's grab this 15. Okay, and we'll grab this 16. Okay. Now, this is where our little funky parts come in to play. We have small poly caps 
to put inside here and here on the two ha tank halves. And then we've got little pins. I think they're still in the box. Yes, these little pins. These little pins come in a little bag and you put those in, in between these. So, first things we'll do, okay, is clean these up. So we get ready to put them together. fit. Yeah. Okay. And you can see where the little pegs are going to stick through. So we need the two pegs. Two pegs. Put that back together. Okay. This is the one really cool thing that I have never seen in a model kit before and I would really love to see this more often because this is an awesome idea. This doesn't want to stay by itself. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, so it's a loose fit, okay? All right, so here we go. We got these ready to go. So, a little bit of glue here. Here, I can glue those if I want, but I don't need to. The glue probably wouldn't even work on the metal anyway. Let's try and get that so that it lines up. Nope, <laughs> don't do that. There we go. So this side goes to the plane, and that side faces down. Okay, so now let's do our little tanks here. If I want to, we'll test fit them first. Because I've clearly got to take care of those nubs, right? But it fits together fine, so that's not a big issue. I can just to make sure it will fit tight. I have always been really bad at eliminating the seam lines on fuel tanks and missiles for that part, for that matter, but that's okay. So two polycaps.
that's glued together. Now here's the awesome part. It's now with those poly caps in there, this lines up and you just press it in and there you go. And it holds the tank in. And then you can remove it as much as you like. That's what's really awesome about this. I love that. Now I got a bunch of sanding to do. I got to clean up that line, especially in the bottom here, where it's going to be most visible. But yeah, so that's that, and that's that. And for the rest of the armaments, I don't need to make them because Maverick's plane didn't have them. Right? In the movie, he didn't have any. It was all just uh, training. And so that's going to be the rest. Missiles, 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 putting the pylons on. Um, I'll put the pylons on because pylons are actually part of it. Um, they're part of the plane. And then it's going to be the seat. So, that is going to be it for today, really. Um, there's not really much left to do other than getting ready for painting. Um, let's just put these over here. i yeah, paint the tires. Um, these are basically, i got to put the decals on those. I got to do a lot of work on fixing up my my seams on on this tank here and get that cleaned up. This is ready basically to be put on the plane. It's going to go right. Where do you go? Where do you go? Boom. It goes kind of forward on this guy. Yes. Okay, pylon C is what they call it. And we're going to see the lines are going this way, okay. Lines are going down that way, so that's forward. This is going to go right here. Just like so. It's not a very good fit though. Is it just because this isn't... Yeah. Our center line is not very... friendly. Doing that by itself is probably going to be making it fit better. It's a little bit wobbly. I'm not sure why it's wobbly. It shouldn't be wobbly. Oh, it's wobbly because it's not going in all the way. It's almost like they didn't drill these holes deep enough. They line up. Everything lines up fine. But the holes are not deep enough for it to go flush. So... I can trim these down. You have two options. You can either drill the holes through or you can just trim these down. I am going to, for simplicity's sake, just trim these down a little bit so they're a little shallower. Try that. Test fit. And bingo. It's flush. And no more wobble. So I can glue that down. Since this is fuselage color anyway, um, I'll glue it down. And then we don't have to worry about it later. Just like so. Make sure it is straight up and down. Because you don't want a funny looking offset tank. By tank, I mean fuel tank. Yeah, there we go, just like that. There's our pylon C, just like that. Okay, 
But anyway, that is where I'm going to leave it for today. And uh, put the decals on the main landing gear. That'll be next. I'll do that in a little bit. And then it's going to be, and I got a little bit of painting to do, got to do the tires, get those assembled. And um, next time we'll work on our pilot seat because we're almost done. We're almost ready to actually paint this thing the colors it's supposed to be. We're almost getting to that point, finally. Um, but yeah, pilot seat's going to be next. Yeah, I was right. We've got masks for the wheels. That's funny. I've never seen masks for the wheels before. Yeah, anyway. So that's where I'm going to leave it for today, guys. I want to thank you for watching and thanks for coming out. I'm almost at, I'm almost up to 50 followers on my Twitch. So please, guys, I need two more, two more followers. Um, please head over to my Twitch channel and follow me on there if you haven't already. And hit the like button below and subscribe to me on YouTube and really help me out a lot. Thank you, guys. And uh, comment down below if you guys like this stuff. You want me to build more planes? You want me to build more tanks? Uh, <laughs> you want to see me build more Gundams? <laughs> I know there are a couple of you out there that like the Gundams. Um, it's just uh, not the majority of my channel. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. And don't forget to head over to my Instagram and check out my still pictures. Especially you guys who like my Gundam builds. I've got my pictures of my Gundams that I've built in the past. So, yeah. Do that. And uh, if, you so, if you feel so inclined... Um, check out the description box below. I'll put the links down there for you. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll see you all in the next one.